everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. Unfortunately, and, somebody and, else is and, here, too. And I'm Bob Page, yeah, back from my brief respite from you. It's guaranteed contractually that I get one day off a month from Ron Cameron. That's how I've managed to survive. Did you hear what I said where you were at the start? Program. I can only surmise All what I you said, said about did where you I call was. Me, did you call me the other day and said something is up? Yes, that's right. And I said, when you drink as much as Bob Page, some of it's bound to come up. I took the, and it came right, up. That's right. I took the entire day just trying to drink to forget, as they say, Ron. Forget my association with you, but I'm back now. And I do want to thank Tom Gage of the Detroit News for sitting in. Time. And I understand Luis Salazar did a good job a good on the job. program with thank the Tigers. Thank God if you weren't here, it was a good well, job. thank yes. God somebody in the Tigers has started to do a good job because this ball club has been in trouble. However, that in a moment, after I tell everybody about our sponsors. Among them today, Uncle Al, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile, and it's year-end savings time with great rebates on select 1988 Oldsmobile models at Al Dietrich Oldsmobile and GMC Truck on M59 in Waterford. We have David Roth and the folks at Cattleman's David Meat Lee Center. Roth. David Lee has opened his new Cattleman's Meat Center now. That's in Hamtramck on Kniff, just four blocks east of Joseph Campo. We have Sports Fans Journal with Lorenzo White's Derriere prominently <laughs> pictured right on the front. That's a great shot, Ronnie. It really is. Well, we had a meeting before it came out. I said, who do we put on? Bob Page's name or Lorenzo's White Derriere? Lorenzo White's Derriere? <laughs> Lorenzo, this I, gar out. I guarantee you, Lorenzo does not have a White Derriere, pal. Well, that much I can well, tell you. Yeah, well, you've got a white face either for that matter. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we also have Dugan's Irish Pub, Larry Payne and the gang, and they're up on the roof promoting the roof deck right there on Woodward North at 13 Mile in Royal Oak. We've got Binary Computers, Woodward at 12 Mile in Berkeley, Pass, the Pro-Am Sports Systems, Maxie's Main Street, Top Hat Hamburgers, the best little burger in town. And you ought to know, you have them every day. On Woodward and Royal Oak at 8 Mile in DeQuinter. And we also have Jack Morris, the former U of D trainer, a longtime friend of ours who has his sports medicine centers around the southeast Michigan areas. If you've been injured in an athletic accident uh, of any type, like See you. Jack Morris. We have on the program today none other than George Foreman. This should be a lot of fun because let's face it, the guy was one of the greatest boxers in history. That's right. I say was, and that was you know 20 years ago, won the Olympic gold medal, heavyweight champion. Now making a comeback. And George, I don't know if you saw the newspapers today, but one of them said you were 39, the other said you were 40. We'll find out what the truth is. Maybe uh, even maybe we'll find out. Maybe even a little more than that. Several but years anyway, more than that. George maybe. also George has a uh, George has a, a big fight in his comeback coming up at the Palace on Saturday night on Auburn Hills. We'll talk to him about that as well. In the meantime, we'll also uh, mention the problems that Mike Tyson's had. Let's, the, the, hold on. Is, let's also tell people, for trouble. the boxing fans, the next program we're going to have is a guy that grew up with you, Archie not, Moore. Archie, Archie Moore. Remember him, boxing fans? Archie Moore, one of the great fighters in history, and we will do a show with Archie Moore. He's working with George Foreman, as a matter yes. of fact. What about Mike Tyson? What's wrong with this kid? He's a confused person, obviously. Obviously, and I feel, and I, I feel sorry for him. His wife's not exactly... Uh, you know, she's had her problems too, it appears. It's I don't, like she's I, trying to run his life. Uh, you know, I, I hate to go back to that Sports Illustrated article that some people thought was maybe a little bit sensationalist when they put I wondered you know, if it was it, sensational. I, I don't think it was. I mean, I don't think this woman, at least just looking at the situation from a distance, is good for Mike Tyson. No, no, no. She seems to be part of the problem rather than part of the solution. She's here shoving the cameraman away. And if, <laughs> the, if, this, if this kid, who, uh, to my mind, already has shown us enough talent to be ranked among the finest fighters of all time, if this kid would have killed himself, are, and, can you end ending his career in a car accident like this that supposedly, supposedly at least, according to the New York Daily News, may have been a suicide attempt? What a tragic thing. And I hope Mike Tyson gets his life straightened out real quickly before so. his boxing career Maybe goes down the divorce would be tubes. the first way to get it I hope, uh, I hope George Bell gets his act straightened out, too. Uh, this guy stinks. Sparky and I were talking about this after the game, and I said, Sparky, you know, this guy's going to cost Jimmy Williams his job. He says, you know, he says, I think it may be true. I, I hope not, but I think it may be true. But those of you who, who saw the game with the uh, Blue Jays on, on Wednesday night, George Bell failing to hustle on a routine base hit by Chet Lemon. Lemon turned it into a double and scored a few minutes and later. And then he should have thrown him out of the plate, too. Well, you can talk, yeah, you're absolutely right. Should have, should have, should have. It never should have come to that because oh. John Shulock absolutely swallowed a watermelon and refused to crank. Alan Trammell out on strikes. I don't know if you saw that pitch. No, Stottlemeyer Stottle busted him right down the middle with a fastball. It froze Trammell. Trammell couldn't even react. Beautiful I fastball. Where, I didn't see beautiful that Beautiful fastball for strike three, and Trammell just froze, and John Shulock froze too. However, you know, John Shulock made an honest mistake. George Bell was just loafing, and this is a guy that's being paid, what, $2 million well, a I'll year? Tell you it's time to take some of that $2 million away from him. What do you do with the guy? Well, I think what you're going to have to do, and this is a heck of a thing to say, with the Players Association, you're going to have to find them for just a lack of us. Of course, you can do that every day. In you would today. think so, but my, God, my goodness, you know, Jimmy Williams and Bell have had this horrible adversarial relationship all year long. If he tried to find them, I don't know what. Let me tell you something. George Bell cost him the pennant last year. I mean, he came up and choked yeah. against the Tigers. Well, he didn't play and not only offensively, but defensively. He didn't he's play still, well. in my mind, MVP. I would have voted for him as MVP. Yeah. But he's, 
I mean, he's not going to call. He, in a roundabout way, he cost him this year. If he'd have had a, a normal year, this team would have been in first place. You know, I, I just, you know, I hate to agree with you on anything in sports, but in this, in this situation, some of these guys are spoiled by the big money, and George Bell is a prime example. He's a dog. Prime example. I won't go as far as say that because he's still an outstanding hitter. Sure but, he is. Uh, but I wonder what motivates the guy. Dog. Have the Tigers been able to arrest this horrible losing now that they've been going through? I don't know. They could have lost this one. Chet Lemon did it seem like did his best to, to continue it by hitting what should have been a double play, but just missed the shortstop <laughs> and went to left field. But Chet's famous for those double plays in the clutch. But he did, and you got to give Chet all the uh, uh, credit in the world. He hustled on that play. Yeah. He made he made a dog out of George. Yeah, Bell. But, but but if Lemon had been thrown out of second base, and Ron Cameron would have taken to the airwaves and gone into the uh, in in front of the camera and said, Chet Lemon's right, the well, worst base runner of all time. No, not with Jason Thompson here. Well, Jason sure. Thompson <laughs> will remind me of Tiny Tim tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> yes, you've said that before, Ronnie. Yes. Anyway, but Chet Lemon, you got. I will give Chet Lemon credit. This only because it was George Bell out there. Well, we're taping this on Thursday before the Tigers begin the series with New York, and uh, I think one of these ball clubs may be out of the American League East race by Sunday night. Where's your Yankees, Bob? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we were going to have a drum roll on this program today. We'll wait another week because Ron Cameron first gave you the Yankees, <laughs> then the Tigers, then switched back to the Yankees, then went to the Tigers, I then went to saying, the Red Sox, then the Tigers. Now, what's your no, seventh pick? No, I never did pick? say the Red Sox. What's your seventh pick? I, I, I'll tell you one it's thing. It's going to be the Red Sox now, is that uh, right? No, I never did say the Red Sox, <laughs> but I'll tell you something. They've got a nice homestand coming up. Yeah, they do. They're playing pretty well. And they could win this thing. I'm still going to stick with the Tigers. Well, I. I uh, but you still stick I, with the Yankees, I, Bob? I, I was going to say, the, Bob, heck, the heck with that pick. I'm still wiping egg off my face from my pick last week. And, uh, folks, I yeah. honestly am amazed that the Detroit Lions beat the Atlanta Falcons. It blew my mind. In fact, I heard one of these computer kickoff shows, and they said the Lions were going to win 37 31. I laughed and said the Lions couldn't score 37 points in six weeks. In six weeks. And how uh, about that? Bob, it's pure stupidity by you. I can understand. You didn't, you didn't have guts enough to make a pick. It's not guts. You enough. wouldn't make a pick. No, because they're two terrible teams. All right, make a I pick. I don't see now. how you can. I won't ask you whether the Lions are going to beat the Rams because nobody out there, I don't think, is actually picking Detroit to win this football so, game. It's a 10 point spread. Do the Lions cover it? No, no, I don't think so. Despite the fact that the leading rusher in the NFL, Charles White, Charles White and drugs. N now, now, wait a minute. Well, it's a, now, wait a minute. Suspended now, for drug now, now, wait a minute. For failing the test. Now, well, no, no. Now, wait a minute. Apparently, it's alcohol abuse, according to John Robinson. Well, it's, it's alcohol it abuse this time. It's the drug and alcohol program. It's alcohol abuse. Whatever. The fact that the NFL has had to suspend so many guys this year, it's an utter disgrace. I know there are more players in football, so there's bound to be more drug abuse, but it's an absolute disgrace. Well, you've got some real Michigan State there. versus Rutgers. I don't even know what the spread is. Michigan State, not only to win Michigan that game. Michigan State should win by 20 points. But Ronnie, Michigan State... Yes. You're going to pick them to win, to Bob? Win. This is the first time in three no. years you've no, no, Michigan no, State no, to win. Quiet. Oh, I know, right? I'm picking Michigan State to win the Big Ten this year. How about that? That program you know, has made great strides. Well, <laughs> you know, hold on. Just hold, hold on a minute. I want to get George Foreman. You, you'll get to him when, when I get good and ready after I get through saying, you wonder how anybody could put up with this guy? This people, guy hasn't got a doggone flu. People, He's picking Michigan State to win the Big Ten. People, not saying it won't happen. Who are you picking? Michigan State. You know who I was going to pick? And I'm second guessing. You know who I was going to pick? Who's that? I don't know. All right. <laughs> but I don't know now. Michigan at Notre Dame. Notre Dame to win. I think Notre Dame will win, too. I think oh, it could no, be a long, I better second guess it myself. Could, it could now. be Bob a Page long year for the Wolverines if Bo doesn't come up with somebody very fast who can run that football team without making mistakes. And I don't know that Demetrius Brown is the man either. Demetrius George Brown, Foreman is the man in I town this is, weekend, though. Demetrius Brown going to start? Uh, I think he'll start Michael Taylor, from what I understand. Maybe Demetrius Brown, you but never we'll know. See. I've been at, told by good at sources. At any rate, the fans out there have been waiting patiently, putting up with you and your nonsensical dribble. Now they're anxious to hear from George Foreman, and they'll get a chance to do that when the former heavyweight boxing champ comes up here right after these messages. What's the problem, lady? Where's your husband? I don't need this. You don't. Let Uncle Al's army come through for you. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Coffee? Uncle Al's highly trained army attacks general and major repairs on your private vehicle in a personal way. Tanks. No. Tank you. Uncle Al, crushing the competition and high cost suit with the respect you deserve. Yeah! Al Dietrich, Oldsmobile, GMC truck in Waterford. If you're a sports fan, whether you live in Michigan or anywhere in the United States, you should subscribe to this magazine, Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. 
Our columns include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Don Cherry, George Allen, Denny McLean, Jim Northrup, Bob Feller, Dick Vitale. Also, more stars and features and profiles. For more information, call 24 hours a day, 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal is available at newsstands and bookstores and Tiger Stadium souvenir stands. Call 751-1818. If you know suburban Detroit, you know that Dugan's Irish Pub is an institution. But what you may not know is what we have new here at Dugan's. We simply call it up on the roof. You've seen it downtown, but this is the only roof deck in Oakland County. A great place to bring dates, friends, or meet after work. We've got the same Dugan drink specials and, of course, the Big Chief Burger. Often imitated, never duplicated. So stop by Dugan soon. See our beautiful roof deck and have a bite of nostalgia. Hey, where's the meat? It's right here at Cattleman's Meat Center where you can buy fresh, lean, top quality beef, pork, veal, poultry, even fish. Packing house style. We're back on Sports View to talk with George Foreman, heavyweight champion that's now making a comeback. And uh, I guess start off by saying, George, at first, why? Well, uh, I'm doing something I want to do. You think about America, you think about life, liberty, and your pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. And this makes me happy. George, or some people say you're 45. Other people say you're late 30s. How old is George Foreman? I'm starting to wonder myself. <laughs> I had to call up my mother one uh, when I really originally got back. They put my age a year or two before than I am, and I, I said, "Wait a minute!" I called my mother up, and she she said, "I don't wait. Let me get this thing straight myself." <laughs> Your mother didn't the, know what year you were born. The George? press got us all mixed is up. Right? We start uh, subjecting yourself to everything you read. Okay, yeah. how old really is George Foreman? I, I wonder now. I feel like I'm about 25. Do you really? Uh -huh. Come on, George, really? I really do. I feel now, very good. You weigh good. 250. You look pretty good, mm -hmm. but you look good for a 40-year-old man. Is I mean, that right? Supposed to, this 45. Is this is a 40-year-old man who does not look good over here. <laughs> this is a 50-year-old guy that doesn't look you, good. But you look good for a 40-year-old man. However, you're still heavier than when you were in your heyday as a heavyweight champion. No, I like being heavy. It's no crime in being big. Uh, you a heavyweight contender. You got no weight limit. I drink all the water I want. I eat all the food I want. Mm -hmm. Just like the old story of the fat man. <laughs> now yeah, I'm but going, George, now what I'm about, going to eat you too. <laughs> what, well, what about the quickness? Well, uh, I never was a track star. I no, I wanted no, to no. be a track star. I made the Olympic team as a heavyweight boxer. And uh, I had no speed limit or anything. You see the situation of Mike Tyson. My God, you could have been heavyweight champion of the world if you'd have committed suicide. I mean, that's a bad thing to say and things like that. But that shows you what the heck his state is right now. Well, sometimes you, you, you read a lot of things in the paper and it's about hearsay. And they try to report it as best they yeah, can. Yeah, his wife is not all there, is she? she? She's good looking. She's very good looking. She's all there as far as the looks, but what about yeah. the brain? Well, uh, she's on a good television show. Uh, she called a good husband. That's, you got to give her brains for that. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think what Ron is trying to get at here, and he doesn't express himself. Uh, I express myself a lot is, better than you. Is, is Robin Givens bad for Mike Tyson, and is she adding to the difficulties the young man is obviously having? Not at all. I think that I, I just had a screaming match with my wife three weeks ago, and it wasn't even in the paper. I got disappointed. <laughs> we even had an accident about four months ago. It didn't make the paper. But, George, so. you're a mature man. You okay. are a mature man, and this is a kid we're talking about, Mike okay, Tyson. Okay, let him explain. Explain to what happened yes. that didn't hit the papers. Well, it just didn't ha hit the paper because once Sonny Liston once told me, when I told him I wanted to be champion of the world, he said, well, George, if you spit on the sidewalk, it's going to be in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. They're going to write about it. Yeah. So he has to get accustomed to appearing in the paper about everything that he say. Their ears are ears all behind the walls. But basically, he's a normal young man, and life is getting good to him. It's going to get better as he gets older. You think he'll be I right? hope oh, it can't get any worse fine. than it is right now. But what, what kind of accident did you get into? Oh, a car fellow was meeting me on the head on, in a head-on collision. Boy, we all got into it. I tore up my car. My wife got a head bumped, and uh, the children were shaking up, and I had to get a new uh, Ford pickup. A new Ford P. You driving one of those pickup trucks? Not with you a did. shotgun in the back window. No, no and shotgun. National Rifle Association stickers in the window, too, George? Uh, no, you know I just one got those a pickup guys, with a lot of fun. Huh. George, Ronnie asked, you, crew uh, camp. Ronnie asked you a question a little while ago, and he said, why? But to me... The question about why you're coming back is not as relevant and germane as why you ever quit. 
You well, left boxing at the top of your game at age 28. That's right. I was a number one contender. I had reached that status by fighting my way back up. I lost the title to Muhammad Ali. Then uh, I had a religious experience. I met up with Jesus Christ, and I found out there was Where'd you see him? Me. I've been looking for him. I'm telling you. In, uh, he doesn't want to find you, Bob. <laughs> he doesn't want any part of you. <laughs> was he in Houston? Uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Oh, he was in San Juan, Puerto Rico. That must so, have been quite a story. I didn't uh, see that in the paper. Was it so. English? Did he speak English, too, now? <laughs> well, i tell you one thing. He mopped the floor with George Foreman a lot better than Muhammad Ali Is did. Right? And so I started to tell this story, and it lasted for 10 years, and oh. I didn't have anything that I wanted to do, wanted to do but that. Then we got inter interested in working with kids at the George Foreman. Center in Houston, Texas, and I found a way to add more equipment by being a professional mm -hmm. boxer, a professional, and I started earning money, and I said, money, I said, hey, this is a good deal. So you're still very religious. Oh, I, I'm and, still a preacher, full-time evangelist. Uh -huh. Let me ask you then, how, as a Christian, you reconcile the notion of beating people up for a living with Christianity? Well, I try not to put it like that. You know, uh, everybody has a misconception of boxing because they don't box. If you're a football player, most people grow up as baseball players, football players, but there are few who grow up being boxers. If there were more people interested in boxing, they wouldn't say those kind of things. They wouldn't even think there would be a But you look at the sport of boxing today, and it just seems to be you've got problems. You've got some confused people that are boxing today, George. You seem to have your head on right and all that stuff, but you've got some people up drugs, uh, robbing. We had one guy walked out of jail and came right on the show, Caveman Lee. Right. And then we had one guy who we walked got, off the show and right into jail, Ricky Womack, when yeah. he held up the tape. And then we had another guy came yeah. right from the drug center right here. And that was George, uh, we've had some classics. Oh, we've on had the some beauties in boxing. Yeah. Then we had Leon Spinks who co cocked that's a, a woman that's another story. in, 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 in that's a bar story. and well, just to sue me for God's sakes. Well, I think they get the influence from some of these preachers. What's, uh, what's his name? Jim Bacon, the bunch of those. Oh, that guy. Right. If you hang around with a bad bunch, you end up doing bad things. But I mean, yeah. boxers? In particular? Yeah, boxers shouldn't hang out with those guys. George, do you think the game of boxing, because of all the things Ron just mentioned, is in worse shape now than it ever was when you were in your heyday? Not at all. Boxing is a fine, honorable sport. I, I the, beg your pardon? It's a fine, honorable sport. It's the granddaddy of all sports. I mean, when you see a guy miss a tennis uh, ball and he falls down and hit his tennis rack on the ground, uh, he, he, it's comp competition. But I mean, everything George, else is watered down. But boxing. George, we have you know deaths in the ring. We have falsified, trumped-up ratings. We have Don King and Bob Arum controlling fighters. We have thievery. We have drug problems. Boxing is in a mess right now. Emmanuel Stewart's even calling for federal regulation. Well, that's because uh, some some of you guys you got you got to look into politics and just think about what I just read about. Uh, these new uh, Democratics and Republican nominees, and that's when you get some mixed up stuff there. Well, I'm, I'm, not, denying, you know, I'm not denying there are other areas of society that are, that are in yeah. bad straits as well, but you, but you really think the state, the state of boxing oh, is yeah, good? Oh yeah, those guys need to be boxers and they would be better people. Interesting. They would fight it out in the ring, they wouldn't have to call each other and talk about each other's personal problems and things of that sort. Have a little boxing match. George These Foreman, former heavyweight kind of champion of, of the world, 1968 Olympic gold medalist here on Sports View today with us and we will continue with him right after this. High school athletes, top Detroit pro athletes, are weekend warriors. We treat them all with the most sophisticated equipment for athletic injuries. Computer testing of injuries with Cybex and the new Lido machine, and of course a wide array of Nautilus equipment. All supervised by sports medicine physicians, physical therapists, and athletic trainers. We've got three convenient locations in Metro Detroit. Detroit and Riverside Osteopathic Hospitals, and the new Horizon Health and Surgery Center. So what are you waiting for? Call today and start feeling better. everybody. Hi, Hi Nick. What brings you into Maxie's? I'm having dinner with the Dovers. There's Ben Dover, his wife Eileen Dover, and the kids. There are more interesting people for you to meet here at Maxie's. Besides that, we have great food, superb entertainment, wonderful atmosphere. Why don't you come out and you'll discover why hundreds of people are saying, meet me at Maxie's. It's the place to be in the northern suburbs. And there's a flipped over, skipped over, the ran from across the lake, float over, and from the rodeo, Buckdover is going to be here. 
Binary Computers is celebrating their ninth anniversary and how they've become one of Detroit's top independent computer dealers is really simple. A great selection of brand name computer products, outstanding service, and highly knowledgeable trained consultants who make things understandable in plain English. Binary now has facsimile machines and telephone systems, so stop in for special anniversary savings at Binary Computers, Metro Detroit's business computer center, Woodward at 12 Mile, Berkeley. Remember, if you haven't got a computer, you'd better get one before your competitor does. It's time to eat and I'm so hungry now My stomach's turning upside down Day or night when I want to bite I want the best little burger in town Top hat. French fries, onion chips, creamy chocolate shakes Baby, they're so hard to refuse Top hat. For dinner or lunch, there's a lot too much And for breakfast, you just can't lose We're back on Sports View with George Foreman, former heavyweight champion of the world, now making a comeback at age, well, he doesn't even know how old he is right now. <laughs> at uh, least the man's honest about yeah, it, though, right? How many guys are lying 50, about their age? George and the lion. He says, I don't know how old I am. <laughs> he got an idea. Uh, George, now, what about the future? Do you want to be, and can you become, heavyweight champion of the world? I intend to win the title at, at, at about 41, 42 years old. Then I want to retire. But come back George, again. you're past that now. Come back again at 50 and do it again and really have you guys talk. George, about. George, I guarantee you, if you, I hate to say this because you know you've been a great, great fighter and you were a great champion. If you meet at your age Michael Tyson in the ring, you will retire, George. Oh, you, you will retire. Uh, I've heard that before. I remember reading in the newspaper and listening to some of the most knowledgeable sports writers and sports announcers in the world, and I found out that the journalists just were fans. They don't know anything about well, you don't know about Page Bob. Do you, do is you not think real, that you, real at, sports you at your age, could beat Michael Tyson? A man would have to be totally insane to think that Mike Tyson could whip me. Why? He says, see, our director, Kenny Taylor, is laughing out there. You heard about that? I mean, Kenny's a big boxing fan. The wondering. audience is laughing. No, he's laughing about you being in your insanity. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, that's been laughing about for years. All right, for now, George, now, George, George, let's, let's be serious. I wasn't supposed to tell you about it. George, let's be serious listen, here. I'm bigger than Mike Tyson. True. I hit harder than Mike Tyson. I don't know about that. I hit harder than Mike Tyson. I got more knockouts than Mike Tyson. And I'm older than Mike Tyson. I agree with that. Okay. <laughs> so why should he be able to whip George Foreman? Because he's so strong and he is an awesome physical specimen and he's so young, George, and he's quick, George. I won't hold it against him. <laughs> so you actually want to fight the guy. And your weight right now? <laughs> sure, certainly. I can weigh 300 pounds and still whip him. Just that for cosmetic purposes. Well, you get that chance weight. to now. When are you going to fight? A little? Of course, how many contenders are there in the heavyweight division Not today, many. if any? Yeah. Who knows who the contenders are? They're yeah. just kids right. running around saying, I'm in the top contention, and they don't want to get out of there. And so you feel you should be in the top ten right now? Certainly. I'm the only guy that have ever had the title that has never been given a rematch. George, we were talking during the break about how much money you lost by quitting boxing in your prime, as you did. You estimate 20? It was million. estimated I lost about uh, by getting out when I did about $20 million. Do you regret that decision? Not at all. The best things in life are free. I've heard that before. But that's why he does those, but, that's why you do the trade outs, Bob. <laughs> but to get for the, but for, 20, million, to get free. 20 million bucks is still I've a lot been of an money, extremely man. happy guy for the last 10 years. I've uh -huh. been a full time minister. I work with kids, I travel all over the country, and actually I've become a good fisher. Your regret in boxing, I presume, is that Muhammad Ali never gave you a rematch after he beat you? For a while I did, but then after a while you put the perspectives together and you consider that Muhammad was a great boxer and you've got to make him the greatest because he whipped me. George, and, the one thing. Let, let, him, let him finish okay. up with Muhammad right. Ali. Go ahead. But uh, in reality, uh, I, had a ch I had my chance. I missed it. And so you don't cry about it. You, you, you go rabbit hunting. You don't put him on the plate. You don't bring an excuse back. The family can't eat an excuse. So I let the excuses go and I try to recapture the title. Ma, uh, uh, now, what we're talking now is, is Muhammad Ali's condition. It's not too good and things like that, that he may, may have taken too many punches in the ring. It looks like it. Well, I've heard from uh, reliable sources that he has something called Parkinson. He would have gotten it anyway. <coughs> there are people saying it wasn't really Parkinson's <coughs> disease. Well, there, there's a but lot doctors say that they are. Yeah. It's Parkinson. He would have gotten it anyway. But being in the ring just doesn't help anything if you're going to get hit. Yeah. George, we've got to get to the next commercial break, but I, I, I want to say in closing this one that I don't think there's any question that 100 or 200 years from now, people will look back at the 20th century in sports and they'll remember the painting of George Foreman in 1968 carrying 
American flags in the ring after you won the gold medal. That was a very difficult era at that time, and a lot of blacks were not supporting their country and boycotted the Olympics. How do you look back at that? And was that your greatest thrill in sports? The greatest thrill of winning that gold medal. But I've always said, when I travel, even to today, when I travel out of the United States, I always travel not as a black man or a white man. I travel as an American. Mm -hmm. And so I carry the colors red, white, and blue. You took some heat for that, didn't you, in 1968? All right, but I was able to bag it up. <laughs> I bet you were. I had that good left. But you're going to say 100 years from now, George, to be the heavyweight champion. That's right. People are going to have to get accustomed to athletes being good at an elder, elderly age. Uh -huh. And that's, people can't reckon themselves with that. that there are going to be great football players at 45 years old. There are going to be great basketball players. And the coaches are going to have a rough time. They're going to have to trade these guys because they can't tell them what to do, not because they can't perform. What's in the immediate future for George Foreman? We'll find out when we, we close it out. out with the former heavyweight champion right after this. a chair for 80 live Tiger telecast with Larry Osterman calling the action along with former Tiger great Jim Northrup as they track Sparky Sluggers through their demanding big league schedule. That's more games than you'll find telecast on any other channel. So bring the action of the majors to your house today because when the Tigers step to the plate, they're at home on pass. That was me, John Rouser, not too many years ago as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. So stop in and see us at the Sting. We're in the old Playboy Club, the largest greenfield, with plenty of lighted, secured parking. Thermal Window, the Midwest exclusive manufacturer of the Polytex 4 vinyl replacement window, is celebrating their anniversary with an unbelievable five day offer. This week only, buy five windows for $995. Our thermo insulated tilt in windows are specially designed to make cleaning a snap, and they have a lifetime warranty. At Thermo Window, we manufacture, install, service, and guarantee what we sell. Five windows, only $995. Call today for a free in home estimate. Here comes air conditioning satisfaction. Carrier. Research proves carrier owners are more satisfied than owners of any other air conditioning brand. Carrier satisfaction. Year after year after year. Buy satisfaction now and get a $200 rebate. Call for details. This is Dennis Krieger inviting you to call me at Town Center Heating and Cooling in Dearborn. We're located just one mile from I-94 in the Southfield freeways. We aren't comfortable until you are. Closing it out with former heavyweight boxing champion George Foreman in town to fight who? Bobby Hitz from Chicago. And you had to ask that name. Be honest about it, George, because I didn't know who you were fighting either on Saturday night. Uh, you only said it because it's true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> and right. what, uh, who, you know, what's his Who is he? <laughs> who is he? Well, let's hope that you'll ask that same question after the fight. Who is he? You're right. Oh, you, you're we don't want him to go out there and beat me. Then everybody will be talking about he's the next man to fight Mike Tyson. You're going to knock him out? Oh, well, I, I, I know how to knock people out a lot better than I know how to win by points. You're 11-0 and 0 in your comeback? 11-0. and 0. And do you find boxing a little different now at this age than you did when you were young? And in your it's prime? a bit easier. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you become wiser, and you know exactly what you're doing, and you don't waste a lot of effort. Yeah. George, thank you for coming on. Yeah, That's at the lot Palace out in Auburn Hills. The card starts at 7.30, I That's think, correct. on Saturday night. Yeah. You and Bobby Hitz. I want to thank our sponsors as well, uh, Jack Moores and the folks at his... What's his uh, record, Bob? Jack Moores has no record at this point in time. No. He only has three sports medicine clinics that people should go to around town. Top, Top Hat Hamburgers, Maxie's Main Street, past the Pro-Am Sports Systems. We also had Binary Computers, Dugan's Irish Pub, Woodward, 13 and a half mile. We had Sports Fans Journal with Lorenzo White, yeah. prominently and embarrassingly featured on the cover this month. Cattleman's Better Meat Center, Page. and their new location in Hamtramck, and of course our prime sponsor on the show, <laughs> Al Dietrich Olsenbiel and GMC Truck on M59 in Waterford. Thanks to the great former heavyweight champion George Foreman, and thank you for joining us on this edition of Sports Week.